Hi everyone, this is Henry, and today I'm going to be sharing with you my informative speech. <clears throat> so without further ado, let's go ahead and get right into it. I'd like to start by sharing with you how I start off most days. Uh, like anybody else, I wake up, I get dressed, brush my teeth, have some coffee, grab my bag, and then walk out the door. Uh, on the way to work, I usually drink one or two more cups of coffee, and this is how I start my day basically every single day. And I'm willing to bet most of you start your days pretty similar. Many of us cafe consume caffeine almost every single day, but do, we, do any of us really know what caffeine is or what it does to you? For instance, did you know it's possible to get addicted to caffeine and even suffer from caffeine withdrawals? I myself was addicted to caffeine for quite some time, and I suffered from the caffeine withdrawal headaches whenever I didn't have any. And I can assure you, it was not a fun experience. Today I'd like to share with you some of the effects of caffeine, tell you a little bit what caffeine is, and how it affects your body. And so to begin to understand the effects that caffeine can have on your body, you first need to understand what caffeine is, where it comes from, and how we use it. Um, so caffeine is a natural compound that's found in a variety of different plants. Um, there are two main types of caffeine that we use, uh, synthetic and natural. Natural caffeine is exactly what it sounds like. It can be found in plants. Uh, it can be found in 60, uh, like over 60 different varieties of plants, including coffee beans, tea leaves, cocoa beans, and cola beans. Uh, those are some of the most popular ones. And then synthetic caffeine, on the other hand, is exactly what it sounds like. <clears throat> it's a uh, caffeine that's derived from urea chloroacetic acid instead of plants. Uh, the three largest sources of natural caffeine are found in coffee beans, cocoa beans, and tea leaves. A uh, study that I found from myfriendscoffee.com shows that over 64% of Americans drink coffee every single day. This equates to uh, roughly 160 million people in the United States alone. Um, the average American also consumes 11 pounds of chocolate every year, which is well, it's quite a bit of chocolate. I think it's equal to somewhere around 300 milligrams of caffeine per year derived from chocolate alone. Um, the amount of caffeine that an American consumes on a daily basis fluctuates a bit depending on the age and gender of the person, with most males in America consuming somewhere around 200 to 250 milligrams of caffeine a day, while women tend to be a little bit less than that with 100 to 150 milligrams of caffeine per day. And so now that we know a little bit about where caffeine comes from, we can discuss some of the ways that we as humans consume caffeine. Uh, caffeine's found in more food and drink than you could probably imagine, including some places you might not expect. Um, coffee is probably the first drink that comes to mind when you think of caffeine. Uh, an 8 ounce cup of coffee contains on average around 95 milligrams of caffeine, uh, depending on your brew or the bean you choose, this number could be up or down, um, but 95 milligrams per cup is about a quarter of the daily recommended amount of coffee. Uh, I think the daily recommended amount is somewhere around 400 milligrams of caffeine, so if you have two or three cups of coffee in the morning, you're already almost at the maximum amount of caffeine that the FDA recommends you have on a daily, ba or on a daily basis. Um, energy drinks, of course, are another big source of caffeine. A typical energy drink contains anywhere from 200 to 300 milligrams of caffeine. So again, one energy drink can be half or more than half of the daily record amount of caffeine. Tea is another big source of caffeine. Um, depending on the different type of tea, there's different amounts of caffeine. For instance, 8 ounces of green tea contains around 50 milligrams of caffeine, whereas black tea contains around 75 milligrams of caffeine. Caffeine, while most commonly thought of in drinks, is not only found in drinks, uh, like I briefly mentioned earlier. Uh, cocoa bean is the second largest source of caffeine that we use, so chocolate is one of the most another common source of caffeine. <clears throat> one bar of dark, dark chocolate contains about 70 milligrams of caffeine. It's believed that chocoholics are not actually addicted to the sugar in caf or sugar in chocolate, but it's actually the caffeine that keeps them coming back. A third place that you might find caffeine that a lot of you are willing to bet didn't know is in medicine. Uh, for instance, a study done by Dr. Richard B. Lipton showed that when caffeine was combined with non-prescription aspirin and acetaminophen, it reduced the pain of a person with migraine to mild or no pain in 60% of 602 tested patients. Uh, many over-the-counter drug relievers, such as ibuprofen or aspirin, are also mixed with caffeine. 
Um, they also usually have a non-caffeinated version for people who are particularly sensitive to caffeine or choose not to eat, <clears throat> choose not to consume caffeine. And so now that we've realized that caffeine can be found in many different places and food items, you probably want to know more now than ever how it affects your body. Uh, so like just about anything, caffeine can affect your body in positive and negative ways. Uh, the most obvious effect of caffeine is it can give you a boost of energy and mental alertness. Uh, in addition to a boost in energy, caffeine can improve your metabolism temporarily and reduce the effects of chronic inflammation that, we, um, that everyone tends to get as they age. Um, so the way that works is when caffeine is broken down by your body, it goes to your brain and blocks the chemical called adenosine, which is what causes you to feel tired. <clears throat> And so and because caffeine stimulates the central nervous system, your body is able to send signals to fat cells quicker, telling them to break down faster than normal, uh, which is why it's included in a lot of weight loss supplements. That's also how it can temporarily boost your metabolism. Uh, researchers from Stanford University found that caffeine can block the gene responsible for age-related inflammation. So uh, arthritis, gout, things like that. Caffeine can be a temporary relief to that. Uh, obviously not permanent, but you know sometimes any little bit helps. Um, so while there are a lot of health benefits from caffeine, there are also some negatives. Um, so kind of on the flip side of that boost of energy, drinking too much caffeine can cause insomnia and make it more difficult to sleep. Obviously, I'm sure you've heard it a thousand times, don't have coffee before bed. Uh, that's true. It can cause some difficulties with sleep. And so like I briefly mentioned earlier, like any other, like just about any other drug, caffeine is an addictive substance. And if you drink a lot of caffeine, you're likely to get some sort of addiction. Uh, obviously, that differs from person to person, body type, how much caffeine you drink, how often you drink caffeine. Um, <clears throat> and so like any addiction, when you stop consuming that, your body can go into withdrawals. Uh, one of the most common symptoms of caffeine withdrawal is a headache that will not go away for hours unless you consume caffeine. And so in conclusion, caffeine can be found in just about any type of food or medicine and it affects your body in many different ways. Caffeine is primarily used to stay awake or for a boost in mental fortitude, but most people don't know a lot else about caffeine. Hopefully now you know a little bit more about caffeine than you did before. And while not knowing about something such as caffeine can be a little bit scary, as author Cassandra Clare says, as long as there's coffee in the world, how bad can things be? Thanks.